Today on our trailer, we're going to be installing the Dexter 10-inch Never Adjust Electric Brake Assemblies for 3,500 pound axles. For the right-hand side, it's part number 23-469, and for the left-hand side, it's part number 23-468. We'll also be installing the Dexter Axle Trailer Hub and Drum Assembly for 6 on 5.5 bolt pattern, part number 84656UC3. Now the installation is exactly the same whether you're installing on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. You just need to make sure that you use the proper brake assembly for the proper side of the trailer. We'll begin by removing the wheel and tire. Next, we're going to need to remove the dust cover. We'll then need to remove the cotter pin here. Go ahead and bend the tabs up on the cotter pin. And then we'll pull it out. We'll then remove the castle nut. Next, we'll go ahead and pull the flat washer and the outer bearing out. There's the flat washer. There's the outer bearing. Then we can remove the drum. Go ahead and wipe the grease off the spindle here. Now with the parts that we removed, we're going to need to reuse the castle nut, the flat washer, and the cotter pin. Depending on how damaged or the condition of your cotter pin, you may want to replace that if it's not in very good condition anymore. Next we'll go ahead and cut the electro lines that are on the back side of this brake assembly. Go ahead and cut them here, right there. Total of four nuts that we'll need to remove in order to remove the old brake assembly. Go ahead and take our breaker bar and socket, break all four of the nuts loose. Now with all four nuts removed, we can go ahead and slide the brake assembly off of the spindle and flange. Now we're ready to install our new brake assembly. You'll notice that there is a sticker in here that says right hand, but if for some reason that sticker was not there, we could tell that it was a right hand side brake assembly by looking at the shoe. This one here is much longer than this one. You always want to make sure that the shorter shoe goes towards the front of the trailer. You'll also notice that the magnet here will always swing backwards. That's another way to tell you that you're on the proper side of the trailer. The back side here has the four studs that'll go through the mounting flange, as well as two wires that we'll be connecting. Now we will be reusing the nuts that we took off to pull the old brake assembly off. Now let's go ahead and install a new brake assembly on our spindle and flange. Go ahead and line up the four studs. Now we're going to go ahead and add in some lock washers here, part number 5-8, because they were not on there previously, but it's a good idea to have them underneath each of the nuts. We'll also be reusing the four nuts that we took off of the old brake assembly. Go ahead and slide our lock washer on, and then we'll put a nut on. Go ahead and repeat this process for the other three studs. Now we'll go ahead and tighten everything down.
Next, we'll go ahead and strip a little bit of wire back here. This is the wire that runs through the axle. We'll use it to connect to the back side of our brake assembly. And when we connect these wires to the two wires on the back side of the brake assembly, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which. You can connect either wire to the power or the ground. Now we're going to be connecting to the wire that already runs through our axle, so our ground is going to be over on the driver's side. We'll be using a butt connector to make this connection here. The blue butt connector that we'll be using is part number DW05744-5. Go ahead and slide the butt connector on, and then we'll crimp it down. Now that we have all of our wires crimped down, we'll go ahead and take our heat gun and seal them off. You can use a cigarette lighter if you don't have a heat gun, but just be careful and keep the flame moving so that you don't burn the butt connector or melt any of the wires. Next, we'll go ahead and add a little electrical tape just to give each of the connections a little more protection. And we'll go ahead and take our excess wire here. We'll go through this little plastic clip portion, hold it over, push it down into place. This way our excess wire is secure to the back of the brake assembly. Now that we have our passenger side installed, part number 23-469, we'll go ahead and move over to the driver's side, where we'll repeat the same process for mounting it to the axle, part number 23-468. Now we've already connected the wires from the passenger side and they run over through the axle. Now it doesn't matter which wire we connect to the ground or the positive of the ones that come over, nor from the two green wires that run off the back side of the brake. We'll be using a butt connector to make this connection here. And the yellow butt connector that we'll be using is the DECA heat shrink butt connector, part number DW05745-5. We'll be using a ring terminal and a self-tapping screw to put the ground wire to the frame. Now the other wire will be tied in with the brake control wire on our trailer. The blue butt connector that we'll be using is the DECA heat shrink butt connector, part number DW05744-5. Next we're gonna to need to go ahead and pack our bearings. We'll go ahead and take our bearing here, put a little grease in our palm. We'll go ahead and push down on the bearing, forcing the grease through the bearing itself. So it looks something like that. We'll continue to work around the bearing, forcing grease all the way through. Now we'll go ahead and pack the front bearing, or the outer bearing, which is the smaller of the two bearings. We'll repeat the same process by forcing the grease through the bearing. We'll go ahead and add a little bit of grease here to our spindle. Now we'll go ahead and take a little bit of grease and put it here in the back side of our drum assembly right here on the back bearing race. We'll then take our inner bearing, we'll put it into position, the narrower side goes in first. Next we'll need to put in our grease seal on the back side here, right here is our grease seal. Sits down in position like that. We're just going to use a small block of wood to help push the grease seal down into position. Go ahead and take our block of wood and the hammer. We're going to push the seal down so that it's level with the back side of the drum here. Next we'll go ahead and take the drum and slide it over the spindle. Then take a little bit more grease and put it in the front side of the drum here. Now we'll go ahead and take the outer bearing, which is again is the smaller bearing. Putting the smaller side or the narrower width side goes in first.
We'll then put our flat washer back on that we're reusing from before, followed by the castle nut. Now because this cotter pin's a little bent up, we're gonna go ahead and install a new one. Go ahead and drop it down into place. Then we'll take our needle nose and bend it up. Now with our cotter pin bent into position, Go ahead and wipe off any excess grease. And then we'll need to install our dust cover. Now we're ready to reinstall our wheel. And we're going to go ahead and check to see if we have the proper adjustment. When you turn the wheel, you want to have just a little bit of resistance or a little bit of drag on the brakes, which we do. So we won't need to make any adjustments. Because these are never adjust brakes, you don't set them up like standard electric brakes. You would just adjust the adjuster on the back just enough so that you get a slight drag like we have here. So now if you didn't have a little bit of resistance as you turn the wheel, you would need to make an adjustment. The star adjuster is right in this slot right here. You would take a brake adjustment tool like this, or a large flathead screwdriver, and just turn the star gear until you just barely feel some resistance like we have here. Since ours are already set, we won't need to do that. And that'll do it for the installation of our Dexter 10 inch never adjust electric brake assemblies for 3,500 pound axles. For the right hand side, it's part number 23-469, and for the left hand side, it's part number 23-468.